So good day, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Community Central. My name is Brian Prophet. I am with the Red Hat Open Source Program Office. We are pleased to have members of the Fedora Project with us today to talk about exciting uh, developments that are going on in Fedora. Before I introduce them, the usual housekeeping notes. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the Blue Jeans platform, um, we do have a Q&A section that you can use to ask questions of our panelists. Um, we will get to those questions at the end of their presentation and discussion today. So we, we will ask them the most voted on questions. So get in there, get your questions in, like, like the ones that you are interested in hearing, and we'll get to them at the end. So housekeeping out of the way, I'm very, very pleased to welcome three guests from the Fedora Project. We have with us Marie Norden, uh, Sumantro Mukherjee, and Marina Bala. Um, they are all here from the Fedora Project. And Marie, welcome, and uh, the and Maria, Mariana and Sumantro, welcome as well. Um, and thanks for joining us today. Marie, take it away. Hi, everybody. My name is Marie Norden. I am Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. That is a long title for Community Architect slash Manager. I have been a part of the Fedora project since 2013, and I started with an outreachy project, uh, internship at that time. And I've been around since uh, doing the, the design team, the badges project, and uh, stepped into this role in late 2019 and uh, been supporting the Fedora project full time. Next, Mariana will introduce herself. Hello everyone, I am Mariana. I am a Fedora contributor starting from 2016. Uh, as, my, as my day job, I'm a product owner for PHPList, which is an open source email marketing solution. Apart from Fedora, I love contributing in general to open source projects on our local open source community. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we yeah. can. So please right. take it away. <laughs> All right. So sorry, sorry for the interruptions. I'm Shumantro. I I'm from Kolkata, India, and I have been associated with Red Hat for about seven odd years. Um, uh, and uh, sorry, for open source with seven odd years and Red Hat with five years. I work as part of the QV team in Fedora. And in the last five years, I have organized and participated in a lot of open source community events in India. Briefly served as an org admin for GSOC and the recently um, closed down Google Cloud Code In. I have also been in the council for the last two years. Um, I formerly represented the Mindshare Committee, which we will get to in a minute. And um, I'm currently the object co lead for this revamp objective. So with that, um, we would move into the next slide. So the next slide is about what Fedora Project is. Now, Fedora Project is a global, inclusive, welcoming community of individuals who come together to build an open source platform, which we all love to run on our laptop, server, um, cloud containers, IoT devices, and we refer to that as uh, Federal Linux. However, the community is very diverse and it cherishes a very set of qualities that Mariana is going to talk about now. Over to you, Mariana. So Fedora is meant to be a user-focused uh, operating system, and by that I mean that its rapid release cycle of only six months uh, gets to bring the latest software and programs everything out there that the open source community prepares and will be incorporated later on to the Fedora project. Also, there are different Fedora flavors. We call them spins and these are for different purposes. One of the most, uh, my favorites is Neuro Fedora, which is meant to be for scientific purposes and help people that do research and development. When it comes to the four foundation of the uh, operating system and the community, both the, uh, the operating system uh, comes in several languages. The default is English, if I'm not mistaken, but by switching, 
uh, a language we get to um, to reach more people or the speakers. And also ask Fedora, the users forum comes in different languages and people get to respond uh, in several languages to technical difficulties that Fedora users have. Uh, Marie, can you switch to the next slide, please? Sure. Sure. I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about the history of Fedora's outreach. So what's the Fedora Ambassador Program? It's been around for 15 plus years and ambassadors are the representatives of Fedora. Uh, it's been a long-standing program. We've had hundreds of people participating in it over the years. Um, what are the JoinSig Advocate Trauma Op teams? So these are different teams that kind of evolved out of uh, Fedora's outreach for different needs. So the JoinSig specifically welcomes newcomers and gets them hooked up with the teams that they need to be in. Advocates solely work on events, and the ComOps team really works on tools and helping the communication internally and basically internal outreach. So we had all of these uh, different programs, and honestly, they've worked with varying degrees over, over the years. So how did we get to the community outreach revamp, right? So the program grew, but it did not scale. There were certain things that happened um, as far as how things were handled administratively that changed. Um, those communications weren't necessarily, or those changes weren't necessarily communicated the communi community properly. So there was that going on. There was a bit of burnout, uh, lack of new purpose. Um, folks were using kind of these old ways of outreach in kind of an evolving world. Um, so I came along and uh, I, as I started as the F cake, my coworker said, mm, probably leave that alone to start with. But I actually got involved in a book club at the open source program office at Red Hat. And we read an, a really inspiring book called Change How to Switch, or Switch How to Change When Change is Hard. Um, and from that, we actually used the ambassadors program as kind of like a example of like how we could use this framework for something. So a couple of us on the team came up with these proposals of how to change. So armed with this and some chatter in the community about the ambassadors program and how it was a failure or it was failing, um, I said, I'm going to make the change. So I wrote up a proposal to the community and part of that proposal was just listening to uh, what the community had to say. So um, the main goal is uh, to revamp the outreach teams that are struggling to function and help give them the support that they need to become a success. So next to Mariana. So the entire uh, revamp initiative started in July 2020 about a year ago, we're 11 months in, where Marie published a, uh, the Mindshare repository, her proposal, and she invited people to join. The very first step was actually to form a team, the revamp uh, colleagues team. And this is how Samantha and myself uh, formed a team together with Marie uh, and joined forces. Uh, once the team was there, it was the time to present the revamp uh, to the community. In order to do that, we had several uh, video calls with the community. We joined a, um, a council call, which are also recorded, and you can find them on YouTube, and started building uh, a plan, a, a master plan, on what we we're going to work on. The very first thing was to create a Trello board, hoping that we will attract more contributors that will help us with our tasks in the upcoming months. Later on, we realized that that didn't work, so we moved our uh, tasks and projects that we had in mind in a public hack and zip file, which we can share with the rest of the community. Our first sub-project, I love calling them sub-projects from the wider Ribbon project, was the Ambassadors Group Cleanup. We looked back six months from November and going back six months, who had not been that much active, uh, based on their fast account activity 
and we communicated to these people that we've launched this uh, revamp. We will be uh, moving you to the Emeritus Group, and if you want to continue uh, contributing, you're more than welcome. We received some responses from people that actually wanted to come back, but also some people uh, never replied to that email, but they are always welcome to come back. This was the first thing to do. Next, we created a community outreach survey. This was probably my favorite thing that we have done so far. We prepared a list of questions and we had uh, other community members help us set up a community survey where we asked community and advocates, and not necessarily uh, ambassadors, official ambassadors, of how they do Fedora, how they practice outreach within the Fedora community and their local communities, and what they love the most, what they hate the most, uh, any proposals for the future, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the outcomes of the survey are published on the community blog, but the most important here is that we found out that people love self-organizing, meaning that there is a lot of Fedora activity out there that we're not aware of. So people do have events and meetups, I guess, before the pandemic, and they don't ask for help from the Mindshare committee. So they do everything on their own, and we never find out about it, meaning that the, the project is more popular than we think. Another thing was to create some Mindshare team interviews. We, interviews, we interviewed each and every one from the Mindshare committee, again, in order to find out how they feel about the Mindshare committee, what their role is, um, how do they feel about their role within the Mindshare team. Next uh, was uh, becoming officially an objective. This was not uh, in the initial plan, but came on later. The Fedora project uh, mostly has technical uh, objectives for the next release or next releases, and we were one of the few non-technical objectives, community-oriented objectives. Next was the community engagement survey questions. These, uh, this actually was something that had to do with the council. So the council was preparing a community engagement survey, and we helped shape those questions and add a few more or uh, shape the ones that were already there uh, from the experience that we had from the first survey. We thought that it was important to apply some of these um, some of these points on this survey as well. Uh, this survey will be open, if I'm not mistaken, until uh, June the 30th. Correct? Correct. Yeah. So I would uh, ask to uh, go and fill that if you feel members of the Fedora community. Our current sub project is the role handbooks. So the role handbooks. Uh, are meant to be documentation, but not in the form of a wiki, but uh, how, from the contributor's perspective. So we're trying to tell a contributor on if they join a particular team, what are their responsibilities or what they can do within the community. Not a very strict um, list of tasks like a job description, certainly not, but in a more um, you know, community-oriented and relaxed way, tell a contributor how they can help and how they can be part and interact within the community with other outreach teams. Uh, as for our revamp so far, we, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have public notes for the community to know, and every single time we want someone to help and join us, we share those meeting, meeting notes with them in order to, um, you know, uh, onboard them with our revamp. We have monthly blog posts on the community blog. The next community blog post will be in a few weeks, if not next week or probably in two weeks, where we share our main points of what we have done so far and what our plans. Uh, we have presented at the Fedora release parties 33 and 34. We presented at Nest last year, and we have to present this year as well. We have been at the DevCon CZ, and we will be at the OpenSUSE conference happening this week with a presentation. Um, Marie, you can move on to the next slide. Thank you. Right, so we also are lucky enough to have an outreachy intern helping us out with this uh, initiative. 
specifically a design intern. I have a background in graphic design, as I mentioned at the beginning. So I am mentoring um, Daria Chaudhary as the intern for de Develop and Design Assets for the Fedora Community Outreach Revamp. Um, so this, the idea behind doing the internship specifically for the design was to make sure we had a lot of resources available. We also helped to strengthen the identity of the ambassadors by doing things like updating the logos, making sure they have the new Fedora logo with their brand where that they can use it where they need to. Also having some new things to hand out, new pieces of swag and specifically an outreach focused sticker sheet. We also have something in Fedora called Cheat Cubes. People love them, are totally nostalgic about them and we are going to update all of the designs there and make them modern. Um, also, we're working on translating um, these different outreach resources. So we have folks reviewing them and uh, trying to get them out in several languages and then putting them in repositories that people can pull and uh, make their own translations with SVG files. Um, so really excited to have an intern with us working over the summer. Uh, next to Sumatra. All right, so um, so what's kind of looking like the outcome of all of these efforts would be measured in terms of some of these uh, words that Murray has put on slides. I, this, here I tried to elaborate on what it means. So first of all, like Murray said, we have been trying to scale up this program and uh, as a result of this out revamp, we try to make sure that this goes out as a reference model to other communities who want to build their uh, program, their outreach program, uh, somewhat like close to Fedora's ambassadors. Um, with that, uh, keeping one thing in mind, which Murray said, uh, we want to make more and more accessible documentation onboarding guides, which means translating them into E6 to 9 languages, which people then would be able to you know, redistribute to their own community and help gather more and more folks who would like to help out with the project. Um, moving on, we have um, this thing called empowering individuals. And now this has been one of the most talking points in Fedora. We wanted to have some materials out there which would kind of reinforce the identities of the outreach teams, like the design team should work with, or rather has, has to work with some work with the marketing team, so on and so forth. So we wanted to reinforce some of these identities to the contributors as well as the teams so that they kind of start working in unison, uh, in cognizance to each other, and that makes the that makes the contributed life so much so easier. Um, moving on, we have this thing uh, where we want to lay it on as a long-term, uh, uh, or rather, they want to, we want to have a long-term strategy, hold on to this scaling that we have been doing, and we, we would want to build this as a part of a process. Uh, we like to refer to this process as RISE, which Murray is going to talk about in her next slides, which is which falls into this part of building recognition, where we would like to have certain key attributes ingrained in the revamp already, which would be taken forward by the people who would be our next ambassadors 2.0 to take care and then nourish and grow more. Finally, comes to adaptation. Me, Mariana, um, and Murray, we have been trying to get to this point where we wanted to invite a lot of people, but a lot of people had their own time commitments, which became harder and harder for us to maintain. So we we keep this feedback loop open throughout the community so we get more and more people roped in as we keep on making this subtle changes in the program and we roll them out in a form of weekly blog post. So that's kind of the future of Fedora's outreach at this point. And Murray has some insights she would like to add in the next slides. So over to you, Murray. Sure. Just to wrap things up, I have some some insights about the work that we've done over the last year. Um, specifically, something I like to call Rise. I came up with this when I first started working with Fedora full time, and it's something I like to think about as I work on project initiatives. Um, I feel that these 
four pieces are crucial for building uh, community health units. Um, so each of them we're trying to, to fit in. So it's recognition, incentive, support, empowerment. So those fit, I mean, all the different tasks and pieces that we talk about kind of fit under the, one of those categories. Um, we've also seen a shift in attitude from the community. Um, people were feeling pretty negatively about the ambassador programs and um, kind of not understanding what some of the other teams do, do like advocates with the Commons team. Um, and some of them were frankly just not very active, right? So we've actually seen quite a shift in the attitude as we've talked at various conferences, having our own conversations with fellow contributors on the side. Um, people are saying that they're excited. Um, they're like, when can we start? Um, whereas previously it had been kind of a, we're not sure if this can ever be fixed attitude. So we're super excited about that. And I think a big part of it is just our persistence. <laughs> we keep working and working at it, working at it. It is a lot of work. Um, and as a last point, Fedora is a large community and there's still a greater need for awareness around what we're doing, which is why we're making a point to, you know, do all the communications and come to um, places like this and have conversations about the work that we're doing. So uh, thanks for coming to our presentation and we would love to take some questions if there are any. All right, thank you all. Um, we don't have any questions yet from the audience, so I, well, there's one now. I spoke too soon. I have my whole thing prepared. Um, <laughs> uh, and yes, we may exactly. still get to them, but you know what? So Nikesh asks, is there any URL to the program or an online resource for them to uh, go to? Yep, I'm gonna pull it up right now. So the first thing you can take a look at is here. This is the objective page for the outreach community revamp. So it basically gives a big overview of the entire initiative. Um, we also have public meeting notes that uh, folks are welcome to read. And uh, if you want to be a part of our meetings, you are welcome. You can, did I put that in the right place? There it is. Okay. So, yeah. right. Uh, you're chat. welcome to get it. You can see all of our videos there, our blog posts, our links to the different tickets that we've worked on and closed. Uh, the different presentations and conferences that we've been to and you can just see what we've worked on every single week for the last year so there's where you can you can get a taste of of more of what we're doing okay and we have another question from brian who asks can you explain a little bit more about the ways you're measuring the success of your program and your initiatives what metrics are you tracking Cool, so we actually have surveys built into our revamp. And uh, we participated in the one community engagement survey. And we've also participated in the Fedora Contributor Annual Survey. So that is one that's going to continue on. We have a set of community engagement questions in that survey that we are going to look at year over year. And we're building this into most likely the COMOPS role as something that uh, is that they analyze on a yearly basis uh, year over year. Otherwise, it's very much a general sentiment kind of a thing. And uh, I think, you know, all the three of us are all talking to a lot of contributors regularly, probably me the most, <laughs> um, but I think, we, we share the stories amongst ourselves and it kind of helps us uh, our morale and these types of things that we're doing a great job and people enjoy and are happy with what we're doing. Okay. Um, so I have a question. Like, so backing up a little bit to the Fedora project as a whole, you know, the, the open source program office is doing a lot of work around just generally getting contributors at all. Like, so between the three of you, like, like what's the most sought after contributor type um, in terms of coding or, or design work? I know, Marie, you said you're very biased towards design and 
um, but you know, you know, or or content production, is it any one that that kind of rises to the top, or is it just basically anybody at this point? Who would like to take that question? Mariana? As we mentioned in the beginning, the Fedora is a huge project and all of its contributors, you know, there are so many things you can do there. Personally, I do not write code, uh, but I have organized so many events and I have been so many times behind the Fedora booth in other conferences. So, yeah, I'm not sure if I answered your uh, question correctly. So I think that the contributor we want the most is someone who's going to be excited and happy to be here and to work with the community. So it doesn't necessarily matter what your role is, but I will get more specific. We have a ton of people who are packagers. <laughs> like we have an abundance of packagers. I'm not saying we don't want more, but it's true that some places in our community could use more help. The non-technical or non-coding, as I like to say, parts of Fedora definitely need definitely need help. It's just working on a mindshare committee visibility infographic, um, just trying to raise awareness about some of the uh, non-coding parts of Fedora and how important like those are to making the other parts a success. So we're looking for documentation people, obviously designers, I'm biased. Um, <laughs> looking for, we have a program management team, we have marketing, we have community blog, we have um, this join sig where it's just hanging out in a channel and talking to newcomers. So really whatever level of like participation you are able to will be welcome. Okay. And while we've been discussing this, there have been more questions that have come in. Uh, Josiah asks, how can ambassadors effectively contribute feedback as an empowered liaison, where they also act as a voice of the customer and not just a voice of Red Hat doing outreach? For example, customer education, uh, PR, and damage control. Trying to wrap my head around this question. Um, I'm wondering if the question is really revolving, and I don't want to put words in Josiah's mouth, but I'm wondering if he's like like talking about how to be an empowered liaison to represent an independent Fedora community. Um, he seems to be under the perception that you know all of the outreach is coming from Red Hat, which I know is not true. Um, you know, so maybe how like how do you address the balance of messaging? as an independent, you know, free software community. Sure. So, you know, we know Red Hat is behind Fedora. And one of the questions that we've gotten um, during this is, or pieces of feedback we've gotten is, we feel like sometimes we feel like Red Hat employees. Now these are contributors who are like all over the world and they're, they feel like maybe they're promoting Red Hat through Fedora, through the space of Fedora. So, you know, what, I think I can kind of try to answer that question. So by making it fun for people, and that was part of the community engagement survey to find out what people are actually doing and what parts of that they enjoy or don't enjoy. So kind of getting rid of the things that make, made them feel that way. Um, like let's not do those anymore. <laughs> um, and, and I guess, empowering them by listening to them and incorporating that feedback directly into what we're doing. Okay. Mason asks, um, and this is a technical question. He's saying like, I was hoping to see, you know, LTS kernels, one per release at some point, but it, I was told it was probably too much work for a one person kernel team. Um, he believes that would lower the bar of entry for potential users. Um, would assessing the interest feature this would generate, is that something your team would tackle? Like like interest in new features in general, not just an LTS kernel. Is that part of your mission? So I wouldn't say it's part of the revamp scope, but it could be a potential thing that some of the outreach teams look at and talk about and discuss. 
So, you know, we're working on really the organizational part. We're staying focused, keeping our heads down, like documentation, making sure those little details that everyone is like, I don't know about this and I don't know about that. So we're really we're focused on the program and how they're going to work versus specific pieces of technology or promotion, if that makes sense. Though I do think our outreach teams could look at this in the future. Okay. Yeah, and following up on Mason because he clarified in chat, and I want to give it a I want to give his question a fair shot. He's he's really kind of interested more along the lines of like, is your team assessing community interest? in in anything like is the feedback loop that you're creating going to help with that as well as far as like new features moving forward or again is that a separate discussion so i don't think that this is necessarily part of our scope i think mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is do some healing work for our community and some rebuilding work for the folks who are already here um, we, you know, valuing those people who are still here after all the years, you know, folks that have come along the way and saying, I'd love to be a part of that, but I don't know how. Um, we have plenty of those people in the community, too. So really working to cater to those folks and, and repair and give the attention to what exists as far as the infrastructure for these teams. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, Cody asks, how does one get involved in the DNI efforts of the project? Um, who wants to take that one up? So I can go for that one. Um, the DNI efforts in Fedora are pretty much all all about you know doing activities. It starts with DNI meeting, which Murray holds every every biweekly now, I guess. And then now we have uh, someone who is a DNI advisor called Vipul Siddharth, who is kind of a, a part of the council right now, and he he is someone who would like to help around with DNI efforts. Murray has Murray and Vipul has kind of looked into a better way of doing diversity. So we are coming up with this program called Week of Diversity, which Murray can elaborate on um, if she wants. And, the whole idea would be to basically have more and more, um, not just Federal Women's Day kind of events, but more diverse events going forward. We even want to have um, uh, mentored projects come in. So now currently our mentored projects are just catered to, uh, let's say, you know, Google's Summer of Code and Outreach and stuff like that. But we want to have more and more such mentored projects get add up as a part of this effort and we want to make sure that that grows so if if you want to get started weekly meeting is the best place dni list would be another place you can start introducing yourself and then you have marie and Ripple who would like to help around if you have questions yeah i, I added the docs the docs page uh into the chat here and uh it's fedora diversity and you can join that on Telegram or on IRC user chat. And for those watching, we will have the links available on both the YouTube page and the uh, internal source page uh, with the recording. So Anil asks a, a general question. If somebody wants to become a contributor, where do they start? Um, what is the level of commitment expected hours per week? I'm pretty sure that's going to be, you know, as much as you want to put in. Um, but, but more seriously, where does one get start to be a contributor of any kind to the Fedora project? Uh, I can answer that. So the very first thing you want to do is create a fast account. So fast accounts are the universal accounts where you log in to any Fedora system and you get awarded your badges by that. So it's very common for uh, Fedora community contributors to know one another only by their username. This is a fan thing that I've always encountered in in-person events. I happen to to get to know a person uh, in person. I didn't know their first name because I only knew them as a But apart from that, you can also join the Fedora mailing list. There are so many mailing lists that you can join depending on your interests, if you would like to uh, contribute into coding or writing, documentation, um, DNI, et cetera, et cetera. And then 
you can start um, checking if there are any tasks or participating in meetings or whatever opportunities you see that you could fit in based on your interests and on your skills or anything that you would like to learn more on. So you're not skilled at that, but you would love to, um, to gain more skills. So there is not um, an hours per week thing. Uh, as Brian mentioned, you give as much as you want and can. So yeah, so if you think that you do not have time to commit to something, you simply do not commit to that. So Mariana is totally right. Those are all like the first steps. But if that seemed like overwhelming, like maybe a lot to remember, you can simply go to the Fedora Join SIG. Now, I want to say um, they're going to be Fedora, Pound Fedora Join. And they are also on Telegram. I'm going to say they're also on Matrix and also on IRC through Libra Chat. So the join group will actually guide you through each of those steps so you don't have to remember all of them and they let you take your time. They're actually like anti folks rushing in to try to pick up tickets and solve things. They want folks to learn about the community and take a chance and have some time to get settled in and meet people. So the join team is where you want to land if you're looking to get involved. Okay, we have one more question um, from the handle X3MBoy. Um, one problem that affected his region was that the only part that was keeping the ambassadors team together was the administrative part of funding events. Now the team is inactive and as a team, they are feeling lost. Um, is your initiative planning to work on this and how? Right. So the first thing we're trying to do is listen to feedback like this. Um, the finances, that was what I think uh, Edward, I know X3 and Boy, is re referencing. Um, and it was, you know, it was kind of a necessary change in how Red Hat and Fedora work together. And it was something that was like out of the control of the regional, out of control of the Fedora staffers. It was just something that had to go that way. So I think part of it is acknowledging that the changes weren't communicated that well and, and, and saying that to the community, like, this had to change, but it probably wasn't communicated in the best way, and the new processes weren't spelled out as well as they could have been. So I think acknowledging that uh, is an important part of like healing and, and, and moving past that, right? Because we have to accept that, like, because this is how it's working now for that one piece, because it has to be that way, and and working on making the program fun for folks and giving them resources that are exciting for them. So for example, sending swag, you know, providing resources in languages that folks can print out and use in their local communities, that you know, non non-English speaking communities. Um, so, you know, and working with the Mindshare Committee and the other outreach teams to kind of pull off things that you want to do. So we're trying to provide that individual empowerment with the resources so folks can you know self-organize but that doesn't mean that we don't want to pull off bigger initiatives if folks want to do them like we're there to provide that support and that comes from the mindshare committee that support but also to help in the resources to pull everyone together so we need designers we need marketing people we need people from the magazine all together to make this happen it won't necessarily be approving, you know, purchases or uh, who's flying to what events anymore, but it can be something different and still exciting. All right. That concludes the questions that we've gotten from our audience. I want to thank everyone for jumping in and uh, asking such great questions uh, around this new effort within the Fedora project. Um, I'd also uh, sincerely thank our guests, Simantro, Mariana, and Marie, 
um, for coming on today and walking us through all of these uh, new changes that are happening within Fedora Outreach. Uh, guests, thank you all very much. Thanks for having us. Right. Thank you, Excellent. Brian. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Brian. Present. You're very welcome. Thank you. And with that, we'll wrap up another edition of Community Central. We will be going on a brief hiatus until July 8th. So until we meet again, be safe, be well, and have a great day.